Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Matthew and I'm back with another video. So for today's video, I just wanted to discuss something I'm very passionate about and that's the education system. Everything isn't always black and white and there are always multiple factors influencing things. With that said, I'd pr I'll probably I'll probably make a video in the future discussing the education system and my opinions on it. But for today's video, I wanted to discuss computer science and software engineering and technology fields in the education system. Now, I'm going to go off on a sidebar and just let everyone know that the education system, in my opinion, has been designed in a way that's general enough to teach everyone to the best of its ability. And I think it's working. However, for fields that are constantly evolving, like computer science or the tech industry in general, it's very hard for the education system to evolve and adapt when we've developed a system that's general. It's much harder to tweak small areas of a generalized system. Back to my main point. So I think technology fields aren't taught properly in schools due to two factors. Obviously there are lots of other smaller influences, but I wanted to keep this video short. The two main factors, the two main factors are the instructors and their practices, and the other factor are the tools and frameworks that we're exposed to. So off the bat, I did some Google searches and I got some stats that I found pretty interesting. For example, according to this website, the employment rate for computer science majors exceeded the 50% rate, and that rate is still very low. Uh, I pulled up some other articles. According to fastcompany.com, that only half of college students who majored in the STEM industries get jobs. And they discussed something that I related to and understood, but they were saying how there's a skill gap between employers' needs and workers' abilities. This goes back to the same point that I was making, that professors and instructors and their practices aren't always the most up-to-date. For most fields, off the top of my head, Things like philosophy. These classes, these courses, they don't change much, so professors don't need to learn more. In a field like computer science, when it's always expanding and evolving and new languages are getting introduced, it's much harder for a professor to adapt their curriculums. In general, we could say professors teach differently. That's why students hate professors. Some students love those same professors. It always varies because people learn differently. But for a program like computer science, when these curriculums have to change and evolve, it becomes very hard for professors to teach. Now, this becomes even more tedious because professors, they spend their lives studying and specializing in a specific field. They end up mastering something and they end up teaching it in the best of their ability. This becomes an issue because if a specific field is changing, these professors are teaching things that are old. And teachers, instructors, professors, they can't go out and just learn a new language or the newest models and teach it to students because they need to spend their whole lives mastering this and because it's so new they just don't have that time i'm currently taking a course that's teaching artificial intelligence but they're using a language like prolog it is still used within the industry but compared to other languages like lisp or python or r this language isn't used as much and this affects people that are graduating because they don't have the proper skill set that employers are demanding. With that said, there are still languages that are currently being taught that are still used throughout the industry, like Java or C, HTML, web development languages. These languages are still taught through our instructors and they've mastered these languages. These skills are important and they benefit you. But when it comes down to a specific field or a specific area in the industry, this becomes a lot more difficult because these areas are constantly evolving. Now the next flaw I see is within our tools and frameworks. This all becomes much more difficult because development is a practical skill. It's when you start building projects for older languages, you're exposing yourself to older languages. You're learning and understanding older tools, but you can't use it as much as you can. If we dive into this on a smaller scale, you'll start to realize students value and care about grades. That's how it's always been. But when students are focusing too much on grades, they end up forgetting that they need to learn actual skills which they can apply to the workforce. Now, I know lots of people that are purchasing courses off of Coursera or Udemy, and they're just trying to learn newer languages because they aren't being taught exactly what they want to learn within their curriculums. And I think that's very important. As of right now, I don't know if there's a solution to this problem. That's because technology is just evolving and advancing so much faster than any other industry. The aspects of our society 
are being held back because of bottlenecks. From what I've learned and read online, I've concluded that the methodologies that we're exposed to aren't always the best. For example, we've started to evolve our development practices and we've started to implement scrum and agile methodologies and that's something that isn't always taught everywhere. Obviously these practices aren't too difficult to learn but the fact that they're not always implemented is a big deal. Another smaller criticism I've noticed based off of my experience is that exams and assessments that are done to test a computer science student's knowledge they're not always the best. Speaking from my experience, I've actually done lots of multiple choice exams and it's much harder to assess your ability in development and thinking outside of the box when you have four answers to a solution. When you're actually forced to sit down and think about a problem and build a project, I think that teaches students much better than sitting down and writing a test. I've said this multiple times in other videos, but as developers, we need to strive to be more than someone that can build in a specific area. I think a developer is an architect, and an architect should be able to use a variety of tools. An architect should be able to use any tool, whether it's older or newer. At the end of the day, what matters is being able to manipulate tools and use them to your advantage to build the best tech. I'm Matthew Mozafari. Thank you so much for watching.